many years ago, I was in grade 12, and I remember it was a cold, icy day, and I was in a car driving with a friend of mine, and there weren't other cars around, and I thought, oh, wouldn't it be fun to hit the brakes and see how far I could slide? Now, there was hardly any friction. I mean, obviously, the tires weren't what they should be, and this car would just slide like crazy. It was a very dumb thing to do. There weren't other cars around, though, i got to tell you. And I came into where there was a curve in the road, and without thinking, I hit the brakes right at the entrance to the curve. And in that moment, many of the laws of physics suddenly gelled in my mind. So many things made sense. Because my car was going straight, and there was nothing I could do to turn the wheel uh, to make myself go into that curve. I was going straight. You know, the first law, straight line, constant velocity. There was no other force to do anything. And I was heading straight off the road into a great big ditch. And in that moment, I understood centripetal force. What I needed was a force inward pushing me so that I could make the turn and not go off the road. The natural motion of a body is straight line, constant velocity. The only thing that will change that is an unbalanced force. If I have this object moving and an unbalanced force acts behind it, it will accelerate forward. If I have an opposing force, it will now decelerate the object. If that force acts at an angle, it will change the direction of the object that is moving. And if that force continues to act at right angles all the time, the object will move in a circle, making circular motion. This force is called a centripetal force. And there's also a centripetal acceleration. A good first example of centripetal force is a little mass on a string. I can swing it around like this. Now it's making a circle. And what happens is this mass wants to go forward. I've given it a force and it wants to keep going, but the string constrains it and pulls it in. And it wants to go off on the tangent, but the string constrains it and pulls it in. It looks like this. Now here's a bird's eye view of what's happening. We're looking down at that mass and it wants to go off on the tangent in a straight line, but the string pulls it in. And this continues. And what we see is the resulting motion, a circle. So anything that goes in a circle needs an inward force to make that circle happen. And in fact, you can't think of any exception. Think of things that make circles, that go in a circle and you'll discover there's always something providing an inward force. Even if you walk, go to make a turn, your feet have to push against the floor. It's not sometimes really obvious that you're doing it, but very subtly they're pushing against the floor and friction and even your leaning to the side helps you to make a circle. There's always an inward force. Look at these examples. A car going around a bend. It is the friction that supplies the inward force. Think of an airplane making a turn. It must tilt its wings in some way so that the air can push, causing it to make a circle. A satellite in orbit. Inertia is carrying it forward, but it is the gravitational force of the planet that pulls it inward, causing it to make a circle. Another example is that children's ride at a playground, that little merry-go-round where children get on it, they hold on to the end, as you see there. The thing is spun around really quick. The arms of the child pulls inward, helping the child to stay in a circle. The example of the kids going around in a circle is excellent because they have to hold on to that little ride. And the faster they go, the harder they have to pull inwards. And soon, the ride is going around so fast, the velocity is so great, that the young child who's holding on cannot hold on tight enough. The arms are not strong enough to provide the inward force and they go flying off. So think about these things and um, everything that makes a circle 
requires an inward centripetal force. And if there's an inward centripetal force, there's an inward centripetal acceleration too.